can hear us. Good. Thanks be to God in heaven. We've been waiting for you for a while with great anticipation and joy. And I am uh, fascinated, Mark. I am absolutely, totally fascinated by what you're doing, what you're teaching people, the possibility of, uh, the way you do it. I listen to some of your radio shows, and I am just very pleased to have you as a guest on What's It All About? And everybody, this is Mark Sargent, and I bet you nobody will uh, really hate what we do today. I think you'll find it absolutely, <laughs> completely fascinating and engulfing. And uh, Mark, I'm going to let you tell the people what we're going to talk about today. You are, I think, an expert, a great expert, and you speak in great possibilities, and you speak with a certain level of humility that I really honor um, I, I honor the way you approach the whole subject. It's it's pretty incredible. Thank you. So let us know. You're welcome. Let us know what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about the shape of the world, literally. The, the shape of the world. Right. Is it in bad shape or good shape? <laughs> well, it's in a shape you probably don't expect. And and the and the question I like to throw out at the audience is, how do you know? You live on a globe right now. And and the follow-up question to that is, without using the words NASA, how do you know? Because it's not like you woke up one day in 1972 and figured out you lived on a globe. We've known on a, we lived on a globe for the last 20, 25 generations at least. So that being said, how do you know? That's, that's the premise. That's the question I put out to the Internet back in uh, February of 2015. I made a series of videos out there called flat earth clues and i put it out to the internet because i couldn't i couldn't prove it was a globe anymore i couldn't do it i i said okay what if we were in a truman show what if we're in a planetarium a terrarium uh some sort of enclosed system is that possible and i waited for the backlash i waited for people to come at me academics somebody in astronomy or astrophysics or somebody at least with a master's degree in a physical science come at me and instead i got the opposite I got a whole bunch of people from all different levels of education and experience who came at me and said, you know what, you may be onto something. And then the, it, everything just kept growing and growing. And you know, when, when you typed in, let's, let's put it this way, let's get the craziness out of the way here, just in case you guys think, no, this is fringe. If you typed in Flat Earth into YouTube, beginning of 2015, you may have gotten 50,000 relevant search results. If you type it in this morning, sort by upload date, you get, as of this morning, 18.4 million. This thing is resonating in a way I've, I would, ne would never have expected. And it started out as a thought experiment, which included the words, question everything. Do your own research and question everything. And that's what people have done. And it's fantastic. You know, we, we have meetups. We have a national conference coming up in, in the fall out in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've got a documentary team. It's going to be here in two days. Uh, they're going to be taking me down to the eclipse. I've done this is my 120 something, maybe pushing 130 interviews. So it's been a heck of a ride. But it all started with, how do you know that you live on a globe? And it's it's been it's been humbling for me because I certainly you know I, I just I just thought I was just going to put I just wanted to know the answer to the question. And instead, I got the opposite. And I got, it's like, the question's the most important thing. Anyway, sorry, I that's have, my opening uh, rant. Well, it's, it's a, a magic opening. And I, I think that, uh, and of course, I've heard your radio show, so I, I understand uh, already what you said and what you were sharing with our, our audience. Mm -hmm. and I, have a, I have a question about other planets and sure. other moons and things how we observe them with our telescopes and things are we seeing round type things floating around in space well they they appear spherical of course but no different than if you're in a planetarium and i know that dates me because nobody goes to planetariums anymore i mean i even the kids when they went uh, let's put it this way back in the day when on weekends they used to turn planetariums into laser floyd or laser led zeppelin shows when you go into that, you can see Jupiter and Jupiter's moons and the rings of Saturn's. But does that mean that you're looking at a sphere? No, you're just looking at an image that wants you to see a sphere. 
That's all. And, and so my question is, when you walk out of that planetarium, when, you know, when you're done with whatever couple hours you're in there, who's to say you're just not walking into one bigger one? And that's really when I when I started on this thing, I, because I, I started out my, my career in, in game design and game development and simulation development. That's how I, I kind of got into this, where I, I was looking at it, I was going, okay, could you, like the Truman Show, could you fool not just an individual or a series of individuals, could, could you fool an entire civilization if it was big enough? And yes, you absolutely could. If enough time went by and enough generations went by, in a domed structure, <clears throat> if it was a planetarium, if you're born into a planetarium, you absolutely will believe the world that is presented to you. Why? Why wouldn't you? It, you know, it's not. It's not like you. How? How? You know, were just born into this. It was your parents and your parents' parents going all the way f far beyond your family tree that you can even track. So by the time you got here, you didn't have a chance. Everybody, you know, including mainstream science. It's. It's. People say, well, it's a huge cover-up and there have to be so many people involved. All the scientists and all the pilots and all the NASA employees. Like, no, 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 no. This thing's so big that nobody is involved with it. It's just a super, super less is more in this case when it comes to conspiracies. And the greatest part about this conspiracy, and I don't even like using that word, is that it was it was made long before us. We've only been trying to keep it a secret for the last 60 years. Before that, we didn't even know. Not for sure. Anyway, so what we're what we're really talking about is is the world a globe or is the world flat? Exactly. And if it's flat, you're basically not to steal from Shakespeare, but if all the world's a stage, you're living in a giant sound stage. And the sound stage was designed to make it appear like you're living in a vast universe. Nothing nothing more. And there has been series of governments and powers that be over the years, but not too long. Again, only about five or six decades that figured this out. I, I believe they figured it out in probably the mid 50s down in Antarctica, just to be sure. And then they just tried to keep this thing going for as long as they could. And they, they made some bold moves in the late 50s, early 60s, but it's worked out really well. Well, this is very fascinating. I'm going to call on Brandon, our producer, mm -hmm. and ask him if he can uh, enter himself into the program for a moment. Sure. Uh, Brandon, I would like very much, and I know we just moved the radio station to a, another city from San Bernardino to Redlands. There's been a lot of change with our uh, telephone numbers and things, and I want Brandon to give us uh, the appropriate numbers now that we can have people call in, anyone who wants to comment or ask questions about whether we have a flat earth or, or a round earth, uh, to be able to call in if they choose to. So would you mind giving us that number or those numbers? Sure. So uh, the number to call in is 909-792-5222. That's 909 22. Okay, great. Brandon, thank you very much. And if anybody does call, let us know. Sure. Okay. So you might have, you might uh, get calls. Because <laughs> people, we, 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 it, we it, hope so. It tends to be a little jarring. Every show that I've done on where they open up the phone lines, people get a little, you know, it's it's, it's mostly because of the conditioning. Uh, let, me, let me throw kind of an uh, elaborated version of what I said in the beginning, which was, how do you know you're on a globe right now? And eventually, you're going to come back and say, well, because of some sort of space program, NASA or the European Union or JAXA or whatever it is. And I'll say, okay, again, how did you know before 1972? Because 1972 was the very first picture that was ever taken of the Earth, full disk in sunlight, the, the famous blue marble shot. Most people know that. But what most people don't know is, do you know how long it was before they took the second picture? 43 years. The second picture was only taken two years ago after our group started coming out and asking, why was there only one picture taken of the Earth from space? So the question is, how did you know before 1972? And eventually, whoever it is, and I, I don't care who you are, eventually you're going to say something to the equivalent of, well, science told us, science proved it to us, science has a proof and I would go really what's that proof exactly what exactly did they tell you because it's not something you know I'm sorry this is there somebody on the amazing. It's, it's amazing I, I'm wondering about uh, what what do we do about 
the other planets. Nothing. It, 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 it's, it, in fact, somebody asked me recently, they said, aren't you killing, this kind of ties to the planets, they say, aren't you killing astrology? Because you know you're saying that the the, the you know the, the planets are not what we think they are, and the constellations aren't what we think they are. And go look, just because they're much much closer doesn't mean that the clock system. Because really, that's all astrology is, and all the planets are. They're just a giant, very beautiful uh, and elaborate clock system. But instead of being light years away, they're right here. They're probably not even a thousand miles away. The, the ceiling of this thing is very, very close, uh, and, and the sun and the moon in the, in the same thing. So when you think of Saturn and Jupiter and Mars and Venus, you got to look at them differently. They're just lights in the sky, no, yeah, no different. I mean, no different than what you would see at a planetarium. They are just pretty, wonderful little lights that are up there. Where, did we land on them? No, of course not. I mean, and, and again, for those people that aren't into conspiracies, Unfortunately, especially if you're American, and I know you're American because you're listening to this, you're going to have to throw away Apollo and the moon program and everything that NASA ever said. And I'm, I'm, I'll take it one step further. As you say, you're saying that, that NASA is, is fake and, and the moon mission was fake. I'm going, no, 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 no. It's not. It's worse than you think. What I'm saying is, is that NASA was created entirely to keep this thing under wraps. For I have as a long question. I, I'm sorry, there's somebody on the line? This gets more yeah, I've been, I've been listening. There I've been is someone online. His name is Joseph, and he has a question. Hey, Joseph, what, what's your question? Go ahead. My question is, sorry to cut you off. Um, that's, that's okay. I was listening, and I'm just in my car, and this kind of struck me by surprise. Um, my question is to you, is since all that may be true, NASA, yes, I 100% believe NASA is a cover-up science program. Mm -hmm. it's, it's truth. It's all about in its nature. But then... Why would they have to go to an extent so far beyond of just not only trying to cover it up, but keep it to where not even presidents know about these programs? These, these are like need-to-know bases. How come, how, I'm not saying how come the general public isn't informed, but how come these, these scientists are actually like, for instance, being a Joseph Snowden? <laughs> sure. It's, it's because this thing is so big. Is This isn't just your normal conspiracy, and I don't want to rattle off all the conspiracies that everybody knows. This thing is so big yeah. that it goes way beyond. I mean, yeah, there you might want to tell a president, but you don't have to because it weighs on people, people's conscience. Meaning, uh, like, for example, I don't believe any of the current astronauts, you know, and there's only 500 that have ever been claimed in the history of, of space programs that even said they're up there, and they're all military. But most of the astronauts that go up there, I believe, don't know. They just sign disclosure agreements. You know, they work for the Air Force, and then they don't, uh, they don't have to know anything because it weighs on you. I do believe, though, and you can look up this, and you guys, anyone that follows the Apollo program, will kind of, this will kind of snap together, which is, I believe the Apollo program knew. Th those astronauts knew, and they told them. It's like, okay, you're faking it, Capricorn One style, and here's why. But it weighed on them so much that they all turned into recluses or crawled into bottles or whatever. I mean, Neil Armstrong did not do press conferences. I mean, the man just uh, hid away because it's that big. It's, it's too much. There, it, it leads into too many questions that are, for the average person, can really, really press down on you. Like, for example, I'll throw it out there, even though uh, you know I, I don't know exactly what the, the basis of the station is. But if this world was created... You know, if it is a, an enclosed system, that means it was created by something or someone. You know, there, I'm not saying it's necessarily the handprint of God out there, but intelligent design at the very least. And if it isn't some sort of uh, divine creation, well, then God subcontracted out the work. And a lot of people, you know, that, that leads into a whole other thing. And, and you, the follow-up question for you might be, why would you try to hide it at all? And that's because, well, science has built a foundation that's been going on for the last 500 years and they will do anything to keep this thing going if they can because science would would be on their heels for a long long time if not permanently once this thing is revealed but i believe it's far beyond even science i mean even the vatican so they have hidden files that nobody even knows ever, about isn't it? Uh, i'm sorry two of you were talking at once there just say joseph go ahead one more time 
the Va- the Vatican. Oh yeah. Oh, oh by the way, yes, the Vatican would have known. And and you're right. There there are religions that would have known this. But until you have the technology, here's where science comes in. Until you have the technology to prove it, what do you really have? So for example, let's say the Vatican. We'll just throw the Vatican into the mix here. Let's say the Vatican had some of the old maps, and I do believe some of the powers that be, and I take your pick, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the Trilateral Commission, just whatever group oh, you want. So you, oh, so you know a lot more. I was, I was, I was trying to be very rudimentary. I, oh, no, no, I no, no, no. I, have, no, no, I know. I know. I used to be a conspiracy guy. So when oh, I really? when, oh yeah absolutely and so when I saw this I was going okay this dovetails into a whole nother set of things but let's say the Vatican knew for example or whatever groups whatever whatever big table full of scary people you know knew about this they had the map let's say they had the map back in the 1500s what are you going to do with it 1500s you you got wooden ships and you got horses. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. So you can't go up. You can't really go out. You certainly can't explore Antarctica. Antarctica, the most unique continent ever. It's it's the amazing thing. Until the internal combustion engine is created in the early 1900s, and until you have those rickety planes, you can't do anything with that information. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as the internal combustion engine, Admiral Berg goes up to the North Pole in 1926, and then from 1928 until almost his death in 1957 he is searching better part of 30 years just flying in circles around antarctica and then he finds it whatever it is and then they shut down antarctica for all time they seal it off with the antarctic treaty nobody you can you can you can take a trip down there to the peninsula you know if you want to spend fifteen thousand dollars have your picture taken with penguins you are not allowed to go into the interior unsupervised and by that they want to know exactly where you are and to one more, the Antarctic Treaty isn't about people. It's about corporations. Corporations, doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter how desperate you are, how much money you have. And this is one of the things that really, really hooked me was that, let's say I'm the head of Exxon Mobil, right? I've got unlimited financial resources. I am not allowed, my corporation is not allowed to go down to Antarctica and set up shop. No, no corporation is, not China, not Russia. Every economic power, on this world has to sign that treaty saying you don't go down there and not only that here's here's the kicker not only are you not allowed to go down to antarctica to set up shop you're not allowed to talk about it so if i've got friends at the new york times and i want them to run a full page ad saying what how great it would be for exxon mobile to go down to antarctica i want to run a full page ad every week nope not gonna happen it's not even up for discussion how how does that happen it's the only it's the only conspiracy i know that's bigger than money it, where money has no play in it at all. They do not care. They are. Be- they said, you know, it's better off just sealing that place off rather than having some rogue helicopter from British Petroleum fly off to where they shouldn't be, and then we have to tie up a loose end. It's, it's fascinating. That, if you want to look into some fun stuff, and I know we don't have a ton of time, look into Antarctica. Why, I got to ask you a is- question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I got, I got to ask this. You're, you're going to, into a beautiful subject. This is a beautiful subject. Um, my question is, now that you're mentioning Antarctica, yeah. for instance, would we be able to see New Schwabi? Because, I mean, in World War II speaking, the Germans knew all about Antarctica. How come, my thing is, how come the, the, the American people who know so much about the entire World War II how come they don't mention anything about the fact of money corporations try to come to German, German, the German people saying, we'll take over your entire banking industry in exchange for something. No, and no, I got you. The, the, you're, you're right. The Germans have a fascinating role in that where the Nazi party, really, really interesting. Everybody was exploring Antarctica when Admiral Byrd was down there, except for a small window. I mean, even, even Project Paperclip, sir. Yep. Project Paperclip. Yep. Why did the Americans, why did the Americans, anything about Americans decide to bring in these Nazi scientists, these scientists that are completely 100% not on our side? They are on the side against a superior race. It, and in, yet, why, in, did, why did Project Paperclip ever exist? Intellectuals have a certain, I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive here, a certain monetary value. And when you have people that are on the the cusp the cutting technology especially of rocket technology which can be used for any military you know that was like the thing you're not going to kill them you're not going to put them through the the war trials uh the, you're not going to make them criminals you're going to hire them 
you know, they're not they're Unfortunately, that's just the cost of, of high level economic powers. You don't throw away the research. You yeah, you, you, you're going to fight like hell to get to the research, but you're not going to throw away the research when you get there. And if you have guys that the only people that can translate that research are still alive when you get there, you're taking them. Now, they, you know, of course, they, they weren't given carte blanche. But at the same time, they, uh, yeah, they, they were treated like assets, you know, no different than turning a spy. Spies are turned all the time and, and treated as a financial asset. And, and in this case, paperclip was a large scale thing. We took half, the Russians took the other half, and both sides used them to build uh, quite an arsenal. Anyway, sorry, don't want to digress. Yeah, I, know, I, I now, I mean, ahead. Vladimir Putin, he, he brags about the weaponry that he has now. I guarantee you he has something called lasers i don't know i maybe that maybe that's a little bit pushing it too much but these russia and america they have a lot of black book projects i mean but the difference is the kgb they're they're now releasing certain documents and how come how come the americans haven't they haven't released anything about the sfp alliance they haven't released anything about even even the John F. Kennedy. I mean, they're barely releasing yeah. files now. Uh, dealers dealers discretion. The the bigger the bigger picture with the Russians, the Americans, and this is tied to the flat Earth, is that the the Cold War was nothing of the sort. The Cold War was just to give a reason to enhance rocket technology so they could figure out the extent of this place. You know, if you think I'm kidding, oh, look look 100%, up. I one hundred percent you one hundred percent you are exactly on the dot. Because if they, if that was the reason, why did we have a space program that was conjointly with Russia at that right. same time? Right. Right. Or or take it one step further. Why did the Russians quit w uh, after the Americans got to the room? Uh, you know, got to the moon. Why? Exactly. Why? They, they, there's no reason for the Russians to just shut down the entire program. And the reason was is because you could not, from a production standpoint, and we're talking film crew versus film crew here. You've got one film crew in the United States, one film crew in Russia. The two cannot exist in the same place, meaning it's almost impossible since they're going to be shooting one. One's going to be shooting in Russia. One's going to be shooting in America. As far as faking the moon goes, if they don't sync up absolutely perfectly, you know, the Russians, the Americans would have to meet on the moon. If they don't sync up perfectly, which would be in the first day, that's it. It's over. Everyone would be able to detect it in, in two seconds. So they said, OK, we'll let the Americans do it. They've got a better production team. Hollywood's doing better stuff. And the Russians will just fade off into obscurity. And uh, but again, make make that's no exactly. mistake. Yeah. So anyway. Mm -hmm. That's exact. I feel like you're exactly right, 100. percent Well, thank you. I, everything you said, I agree with exactly on the dot. Cool. I got a quick question. How many years have you been a conspiracy? Oh, I long time. Uh, I was a conspiracy. Well, later in life, but but I by that I mean I saw. I'm old enough to have seen JFK in the theater back in the early 90s. So that's up until then. I mean, I grew up on a, a rural island up in Washington, and I never even believed that powers, you know, the authority figures lied. I was really naive. And so when I saw JFK, I was like, okay, I got to start digging into more of this stuff. And then I got, you know, more and more. But by the time I got to the whole flat earth and closed world thing, I was bored with conspiracies because I pr pretty much, you know, rehashed them so many times that I had nothing new. And then this thing came across my desk. I was going, okay, I'll look at it. And then I realized it was a Pandora's box and it turned into something much, much uh, bigger. And also, I got a quick question about flight patterns as well. Yeah. Um, on, a flat earth, on a flat earth map and a global map, there's mm -hmm. two different directions. When right. you make flight patterns on a globe map, on a globe map, for some reason, it starts looking like like a jigsaw puzzle, okay? It goes, the flat patterns are going everywhere, but right. the reality is going from direction to direction. On a flat Earth map, why is it that when it actually is labeled down and corrected, flight patterns, fit, and it only makes sense, you actually see the current trajectory and you yeah. see where they're headed. Because there's no shortcuts on a flat Earth. That's that's why it exists like that. Exactly. And, and, and for people that don't know what a flat Earth looks like, it's if you take a globe and you smash it down into a dinner plate where the North Pole is literally the center, center of the dinner plate and then Antarctica is stretched out around the entire outer rim. And so, again, you look up the flight patterns yourself. I was dealt with a, a person that booked, she was an international travel agent 
And she said that if you, she lived in the Southern Hemisphere and she said people in the Southern Hemisphere complain all the time because you can't get from point A to point B in the Southern Hemisphere like South America to Africa or Australia without taking these weird northern paths that go out of your way that double the distance of the flight when you should just be flying over either the Indian Ocean, the South Atlantic Ocean, or the South Pacific Ocean, and it never happens. I mean, there yes, there are some nonstop flights, but they're so very rare. And even when you are on them, if you can book them, your G the GPS system drops off as soon as you get out over water, which should be impossible because the GPS system, which is a DOD system, Department of Defense, U.S. military, should have blanket coverage over the entire globe. And instead, it's the opposite. We have these huge chunks of dead space where there is no latitude and longitude coordinates. Oh, yeah, the graphic may be there, but you cannot get the details of the plane. That was one of the first things I looked at that was uh, it was pointed to me by a guy in England. Gentlemen, I, I'm going to have to interrupt this for a couple of minutes tonight because we are a radio station. We have to take a quick break, but I don't want you to go away. Okay. I think that what you're saying is very interesting, and I personally want to hear more of it, and I'm sure our audience does also. So let's take a quick break. We'll be back in about three minutes. Okay. All right, no problem. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. We have a very interesting uh, and controversial subject we're talking about uh, flat earth versus round earth and we have a pretty hot conversation going on uh, before we continue i would like to just uh, remind everybody that uh, shortly we do have a report on the infants i i hope that mark is able to call in today and give us a report on the infants that we're uh, treating we're having some pretty good results with those babies and that's a wonderful wonderful thing and i also want to remind you that you are responsible for the precious body that you have and i want each and every one of you to take advantage of our offer to send you the free information on the best foods worst foods list and all you have to do is call our back line remember the back line is for people who call in who want to ask questions who want things to be covered on the show who don't want to have to talk live on the radio the back line number is area code 909-257-7707. That's area code 909-257-7706. I might have said another number. I'm sorry. Again, 909-257-7706. Back line. Call that line and tell us that you want a free copy of the list. Give us your name and address, and we'll send you that list. It can save your life, I promise you. Okay, gentlemen. Go ahead. Uh, you are discussing a very interesting subject. So let's go on for a few more minutes, and if we uh, have another call, we'll interrupt and, and uh, let them have some time as well. Go ahead. All right. I, I think Hi. I'm talk talking to Joseph, right? Yes, yeah, sir. How you doing? Good. What's up? <laughs> um, I actually thought of a quick question, another one, which is kind of quite funny. Um, within the files that Joseph Snowden released, it does confirm a little bit about, I guess, sort of the subject about flat earth in a sense mm -hmm. but it covers more of I think it covers more of, of a bigger picture but within a certain files it actually says why, why does it say about terrestrial officers and non-terrestrial officers I don't know I don't know. In fact, it would surprise me if if Snowden would be allowed to release most of it because the way the whole flat earth thing spreads and I'm not kidding you when I say this it, it's really 90% of our community is still out there kind of in the shadows, meaning they don't know because you don't know. I mean, you could be walking by flat earthers and you don't know if they're flat. It's not we wear buttons and stickers on our cars and anything, but I run into more and more of them. So the way it's been spreading, I kind of treat it like the um, the old Spice Girls album, you know, the you know, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. The, if Chris Rock had a great line yeah. about that where he said that. You know, it's an interesting album. He goes, it won Grammys and millions of copies were sold, but no one admitted to owning it. And that was very true. It was like it was one of those albums which you bought, you kept in a drawer somewhere, you played it when no one else was around. And that's really kind of what the Flat Earth has been for a vast amount of the community. 
because you weren't sure what people would think of you listening, you know, figuring, figuring out the whole flat earth thing. But more and more people, as we've had more, you know, nobody wants to be the first person on the dance floor. It's been going forward. Anyway, the short, short answer to that, I'd be surprised if Snowden would be able, able to talk about it. I mean, rumor has it. I mean, I don't know if it was true when uh, Anonymous addressed it, it was at least a month ago. That's, that was kind of the case. So we'll see. We'll see, but I know that mainstream's been picking up on it more and more. Um, this thing really exploded once the Denver Post picked it up a few months back, where once they picked it up and put it on their front page, a lot of people jumped in. And now we're just kind of waiting for the next the next tier. Thank you. Thank you very much for answering my question. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, we can... Uh, do we have any new callers yet? Okay. Uh, I want to talk about uh, John Robbins because he will be calling in, and we may have some others call in. So let's uh, try to wrap this up. Do you have another question you might like to ask that's quick and fast and easy? Hello, Joseph? Joseph may have left us. Oh. Without Joseph saying Smith. goodbye? Come on, Joseph. That's not nice, Joseph, but we love you anyway. <laughs> you you sparked uh, an incredibly good conversation, and you're welcome to call us back any time. Hey. And also, um, Mark, I want to ask you if you would be willing from time to time mm -hmm. to come on board and talk a little bit about uh, any new developments or new things that might be happening or I would questions. I would love to because I unfortunately I do have to leave by the top of the hour just because I've got a, a, a local paper interview that's uh, okay that's well be, that's, that's good coming. we have some stuff too that we do toward the end we have uh, okay. some patients that we're following and perfect we share their progress with uh, our guests and do we have any other callers we need to deal with Brandon hold on he's he's going crazy behind the window Maybe. We have uh, John Robbins. Okay, John Robbins, why don't you get on the line? Okay, I'm on the line. You're there. Well, John, have you been listening to us? Do you know what we're talking about? A little bit, yes. I'm... We're talking about something that is absolutely so interesting, and what you're doing is so interesting, but it's all in medicine, and uh, probably a lot of conspiracies go on there. So maybe in the next uh, month or two, we could have uh, uh, both of you on the air at the same time, and we could talk a little bit about some of the things you're doing and some of the things that uh, Mark is doing and try to see what similarities we have. Because there are absolute things going on in medicine that I've been aware of for many, many years. And that's why I am not turned off by this, uh, this wonderful investigatory phase for is the earth flat or is it round? Yes. So, Mark, I really want to thank you for calling us and... Um, I listening to your programs uh, that I did. Mar uh, my friend uh, Justin mm -hmm. is the one who introduced me to you and helped me listen to the radio programs and encouraged me to talk to you. And once I listened to some of your stuff, I thought, you know, you're really intellectual. You're not a crazy person. You're looking for the truth. You're doing it in a very honest, appropriate manner. You're not discrediting anything or anybody in a negative way and i really honor you for that and well, thank I you very much I, I i do and i very much would like to have you come back and uh and be with us again so feel free to call and do you do you know um justin well enough to have his phone number or anything i i don't but justin can can shoot me a line i think he was the one that uh yes he mistaken. got he got us together he, yeah. he was our pimp so to speak yeah I'm, yep. I'm, I'm i'm going to uh ask him to to invite you back soon Okay. So I want to really, really thank you very much and bless you for your work and all that you're doing to try to open our minds to the reality of what may or may not be. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again. And take care, and God bless you. And, and whatever you do, may it be the best, and may the outcome be the best. All right. Thank you very much for having me, and you guys have a great rest of your day. Amen. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right.